In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very welcome, very welcome. Five Jesus family, some of the grandchildren, all very welcome. You know well because of your family tradition in the faith and its practice in life and the example of your dad and ma, you know, the funeral mass has a very special tradition. Father Sean O'Kiv coming with you from Clondalk and out today. Very welcome. Our own Father Brain as well. No. That great tradition that we have of celebrating the Eucharist and God's Word, the occasion of the funeral, brings together the life today of Desmond here, presenting him to the Lord but also as an occasion of prayer, an occasion of support, which we can't have the way we should have because of the world, and an occasion of remembering, and an occasion of appreciation. And so with that in mind, we pray our Mass as well as we can, beginning with, I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I fail to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant is, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll sit for the celebration of God's word today. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and uphold you with my right hand of justice. For I am the Lord your God who grasps your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not, I will help you. I have brushed away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Can a mother forget her? infant be without tenderness for the child within her womb. Even should she forget, I will never forget you. 
See, upon the palm of my hand I have written your name. Yes, in joy you shall depart in peace. You shall be brought back. The word of the Lord. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall not be harmed if you stand before the Lord of hell and death is at your side know that I am with you through it Second reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to te tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. He has made everything in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. This is the word of the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Gospel now is part of the resurrection narrative from St. John's Gospel. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. The Gospel of the Lord. We'll just sit down for a few moments now. A short little reflection here now today. And Father Sean O'Quiv so generous he came with you and he just the few words I had with him before the funeral he just mentioned his admiration for the days which so many people had but then he went and just mentioned that he had anointed him and given him Holy Communion on Sunday before he died lovely and lovely that you came with the family and thanks The, just to mention today, the day of your father's, grandfather's funeral mass here in Strambelly is also the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes. And we all have lovely memories of our little efforts at praying and turning to our Blessed Lady and maybe even visiting Lord several times here with the parish pilgrimage. And also today is the World Day of Prayer for the sick. Bless our sick Lord and help them especially at this time. I knew this maybe accidentally, but well, and like everyone else who knew this, if you knew him, you were friends with him, and he was a friend with yours. That was part of his lovely personality. But I want to say this bit first. I loved the times I was drawn with him out in the heath in Dad's army. The family and all, oh, Dad's army. All us old lads playing as if we were young out in the heath. But anyway, I loved when I was drawn with him. And you know, if it's not too much to say, he loved being drawn with me too. <laughs> he did, he did. And I tell you why, the toes went around, talking non-stop about Strad Ballet and its people. And that's why he loved being drawn with me. Do you know, such a family, are they there still? Oh, no. All the different, it was in his heart, Strad Ballet was in his heart. And here he's home with us today. Now, <clears throat> today is a special homecoming. I know the journey is bringing us now to Oakfell, but that's a lovely homecoming too because he's 
going to the grave where his dear wife Winnie went 12 years ago. Lord have mercy on them both. <clears throat> so it's a special homecoming. Our funeral today has this sadness about it, that all the people and all the former prison officers who'd love to be here can't be here, that it's confined to a family occasion. And it's sad for the family too, but they have such lovely memories to carry with them. And their dad lived so well for so many years. His 96th birthday, the day before he died. But <clears throat> so it's not sad in the sense he had a long and healthy and a very good life. But it's sad that the people who would want to be and love to be here can't be here. And I'm sure he was, he's very pleased that in the guard of honor of prison officers, he had his own grandson. And maybe it's an occasion because of Des's record in the prison service to say that maybe the prison service, we don't appreciate what they do and how they do it as we should maybe the prison service. Anyhow, <clears throat> his funeral has to go ahead with family rather than having friends and neighbors. The parting is also a special occasion. He has 14 grandchildren, I don't know them, but I know that the funeral of a grandparent is a special occasion for grandchildren. Very often, it's the first occasion, maybe, that grandchildren experience of someone who loves them and someone they loved dying. It's often for grandchildren their first real experience of death and how it makes you feel on the inside and so on. So it's an important occasion for grandchildren to be at their grandparents' funerals and so on. And uh, also that whole mystery of life and death, to experience something of that through the death of a family person, especially when it's a family person that they can look back and say, he had such a good life and such a long life. It's more a celebration of his life than an occasion of sadness. Resurrection and new life takes over at the end of life on earth. Life is the mystery of life from birth to death. And for all of us Christian believers, a way beyond it into new life. And that's what the gospel is about. Mary, Mag or, um, yeah, Mary Magdalene experiencing Jesus, the risen Lord. And that's our hope and our prayer. And uh, Jesus said to her, I'd have lost the page, no one wouldn't be able to find it again. But Jesus said to her, that <clears throat> Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, and he's going to the Father, and he said, go to my brothers, he said to her, and tell them that I'm returning to the Father, to my Father and theirs. That, uh, my God and their God. So on that thought of resurrection and new life, as we part with, as I say, on behalf of all of us here, may he rest in peace. Amen. And uh, may he be united in love and peace with his departed wife through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll stand now for the prayers.
Loving God, we pray for Grandad who has died. May God now welcome him into heaven where he will be reunited with Granny. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> we pray this morning for the deceased members of the Mulhair, Barn, and Keeley family, especially our dear mother, whose 12th anniversary was on the 1st of February, and my husband, Aidan. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We pray also for those who are joining us via webcam from all over the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. May God lay his healing hand on them and give them courage and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Today we remember all our extended family members who have passed. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We pray for all our priests and for the Pope's intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. Thank you very much. Lovely. And just to conclude now, for death, for all our holy souls, also today the sick, the sick, experience of sickness at this time of the virus and uh, our blessed lady Lord, our lady of lords all of us together hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 
as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Des. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die so that in your sight we might all live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim sending down your spirit on them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Des, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to pray together the great prayer of Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in all days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all the stress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you, because the power and the glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Shall I run away when you say the word? So I may find him, but if I speak in sin, for eternity.
Remember afterwards, we hardly said a prayer. Say, oh no, Jesus, mercy, and Mary, help, my Lord and my God. Our prayers also are asked. Jim Maloney, Tana Farn of Vickersound, his funeral in Vickersound today at 2 o'clock. And also we pray for Terry O'Connell, died this morning, Terry O'Connell Rickerson died this morning. May they rest in peace, and may all our holy souls be with the Lord in everlasting life. Amen. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercy we grant that strengthened by it, our brother Des may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before the final prayers now, Okay. Memories of Grandad. Psyche. Ah, it's yourself, uh, Helen, no, Una, ah, it's Elizabeth, no, it's Susan. It's great to see you, Elena. You're a fine big girl. Granted, it's no filter. Grabbing her hand in that way that we all know. Ouch, Grandad. His rose is out the back and the pink and blue hydrangeas in the front. His red woolly waistcoat at my graduation. The ice cream van coming into St. Patrick's Park, where it was always sunny. How Granny looked at him. How rich I thought he was as a child, and how he loved his cars. The white wooden things in the front lawn to stop the cats. Granny telling me about spotting him, the scandal. Dad telling me of him waking them to say Liz had arrived overnight in the next room, Dublin Road, 1960. 
Dad telling me how strict he was back in the day and me thinking, yeah, right. Much as Eva and Leila do now about their granddad. Max, foul Max. Catching me skull and golden syrup from the corner press in the kitchen of number 35. You'll get mud fat. Three, two, one and dusty bin. Roads and directions. Molasses in the fridge. Prison tales. Demolishing a lemon moose at my communion. Man calling him daddy after Granddad Jack died so young. His hands, his watch, his binoculars. Sleeping in the front box room and listening to the hum from next door as Granny and Granddad said the rosary every night. The daily mirror when he'd come home from work. The kitchen table set for him every morning. Egg toasted sandwiches. The sneaky 20 quid every single time. How he held Granny when she was dying. Liz, when Dermot arrived on, tell him you're married. And the unconditional love. Rest in peace, Granddad. Desmond Hare was born across the road from this church. On the 8th of February 1925, his parents, Michael and Margaret Mulhair, welcomed Des into the world. Margaret was also known as Peg. Des was the middle of five children. And in a very different Ireland, what we now know, he grew up around the roads and main street of Stradley County Leash. The Irish state was in its infancy then, and his late father, Michael Mulhair, was a taxi driver, the first one in Leash. After Des grew from a boy to a teenager, he would leave school early, like most young Irish males at the time, and he worked at different jobs and gave the money to his mother and father. He farmed land for the Mulhairs of Courthood and the Mulhairs of Tankardstown. Des then became a lorry driver for some time before joining the Irish Prison Service in 1948. During these years, he met and fell in love with a lady called Winnie Byrne from the Cork Road in Stradley. She was to become Winnie Mulhair after they married on the 31st of March, 1948. Together they would start a family and have five children. Michael was their first and he arrived in 1949, followed by Harry, Maraid, Mary and Elizabeth. As a result of tragic circumstances, he became a father figure to two of Winnie's nieces, Colette, who would be watching today from Australia, and also the late Una. Their sister Patricia, who will be watching from England, would often remark of his fatherly advice and his care of her and her late husband Joe in times past. In their first months of marriage, they lived in Stradley before moving to Port Leash, where they lived in the prison houses on the Dublin Road. First in number 31, before moving down to number 20. After his promotion to chief officer, they moved to Dublin in 1973. Des was a very hard-working and dedicated family man who was always there with a helping hand if you needed him. He was a dab hand at DIY, a mean wallpaper hanger, and could turn his hand to most things. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He worked his days in Port Leash Prison. And when the pay would come in, he would hand it to Winnie, who would run the household with it. His devotion in life was to his wife and to his children. Des loved the bog, and he would save turf from Clunkeen Bog on the Mount Rat Road and later Kyle Felicia Bog on the Mount Melick Road with his two sons, Harry and Michael. Des down cutting and throwing it up, Harry catching, and Michael stacking and drawing it with the bogey and ass. Harry told me catching it was the worst job to get. If you were not ready for the next sod, you could easily get hit in the head. Because there was no slowing Des once he got going with the slaying. During that time as well, Michael and Teresa and Harry and Margaret presented them with six beautiful grandchildren, Susan, Desmond, Mark, Helen, Seamus and Una, who were the light of their lives. My grandfather took great pride in working for the Irish Prison Service. He served the state for 34 years, and it was before my time. So I will quote a man who worked with him back then to sum up how he was thought of. This is a quote taken from a piece by Larry Buggy in the Irish Examiner in 2017 when the training unit at Mount Jai closed. 
The first chief officer of the training unit was Desi Mulhair. Desi was an old-fashioned prison officer who was tasked with setting up a new prison. He was an inspired appointment. He was an, Desi was an inspired appointment. Excuse me. Years of experience in Port Leash, the bog, as he always referred to it, and also in Mount Joy, had made Desi into what was known as a cute old jailer. Desi Mulhair was a mild-mannered yet positive leader, proud to be from Leash, passionate about golf. He gave respect to everybody and he showed respect to all. And he taught respect without ever having to say a word or give any lecture. He embodied it. He could be funny, brash at times, doleful, thoughtful, and at the same time, always caring. He inspired confidence. He led by example, never confronted his staff, and always advised rather than challenged staff when they got it wrong. We often got it wrong and learned that the chief officer supported us and was not malicious. Desi Mulhair was an outstanding leader who was left leaderless himself by the department, but still achieved and led with dignity. That quote, I think, sums up his time in the prison service much better than I could have managed. His main interest outside of his family was sport. GAA was a big part of his early life, and he played midfield for Leash in the league and the championship, but finished playing inter-county at the age of 25 because of a bad knee injury. He played on in the midfield with Stradbally, alongside the great Bill Delaney, who would become his brother-in-law when he married Des's sister, Betty. He loved playing badminton in the 60s, but golf took over in the 70s when himself and his son, Michael, joined the Heat Golf Club. He was a good player and won competitions which sent him to Scotland and Spain. He played until his failing eyesight stopped him in 2009. In later life, he loved watching soccer on the TV, even though he couldn't see it very well. His life was devastated when he lost his beloved Winnie on the 1st of February 2009, after 65 years together. And having just celebrated his 96th birthday on the 8th of February, he returned to her loving arms when he passed in the night. I will now read words of thanks written by the family. It would be impossible to name everyone who helped us through the last few months of Dad's life, but without malice, we have to mention some people. Father Sean O'Cueve, who sits here to sit today, whom Daddy adored and was amazing in his providing his spiritual support to Grandad. His daughter-in-law, Teresa, who supported us through the death of both of our parents and without whom we would have been lost. His de facto son-in-law, Jim, who became Dad's physical support in the last few months. The community nurses, Caroline and Rachel, Professor Ronan Collins, Dr. Liam Lynch, the lovely staff of Cadden's Pharmacy, his carers, Bola, Emily, Robinson and CJ, who always came to him with a smile and brightened his day. Three stalwarts from his prison officer days who always kept in touch and much appreciated phone calls and visits, Des Donovan, Gus Hayes and Michael Lynch. On this day, we also remember his late son-in-law, Aidan, with whom he had a very special relationship, and Midge O'Donnell, to whom he will always be Pa Bear. We also want to thank Father Kelly for saying the funeral mass of his old golfing buddy. I would personally like to acknowledge, on behalf of the rest of the family, the tremendous care given to Grandad by his daughters, Mary Elizabeth Murray, in his later years. He lived to an old age in his own home. <coughs> in good health until near the end. This would not have happened, I believe, without the love and care of my aunts. <coughs> Excuse me. Grandad. You leave a great void in our lives, but we all take solace in knowing that you and Granny are together again. We miss and love you both. Very good, very good, very good. Thanks now, everyone. It's a pleasure to have the one here, family here today. With this. The Lord be with you, lovely to sing. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father Sean, who have now leaders in the final prayers, and then we'll proceed.
nice thing about proceeding to the cemetery hours, I think, is we'll accompany in death. We'll accompany in every one of you through life, to church, to shopping, to school, and we'll accompany you and you'll accompany him on his final journey. May God bless you. The Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Before we go our separate ways, let's take leave of our brother Des. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we should joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest, grant us, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Des in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, we will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed on Des in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help those who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Des forever. In peace, let us now take Des to his place of rest. <laughs>